Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm super excited to be using this little storybook spring set from the latest release. This was illustrated by my crafty bestie Dawn Woolslagle. If you're not a colorist, it also has stencils that come with it, but today we're going to be doing a really super easy beginner-friendly watercolor technique. So I am working on uh, cold press watercolor paper. This one is actually by Altenew, and I am just laying out all of my stamps because um, we're going to white heat emboss. So it has this little, it has like a bunch of little florals in it. You can put them together different ways. Um, but the main wreath part is open at the top. And sometimes I have found when you have images like this that when there's no connector that they can kind of move and not line up with the die. So my little trick for that is I actually put the die down first, line my stamp up, and then I pick everything up with my misty door. Well, everything except for that little B. Um, <laughs> and then that way I know when I stamp it, it's going to stay exactly the way that it needs to for me to be able to die cut it. Now, if you're a person who's not using the dyes, you you know, you won't have to worry about that. Um, so I'm treating with my anti-static tool, super important when we're embossing. And then I'm going to stamp these all out in the Brilliant White Pigment Ink from Honeybee. And then we're going to use a white detail powder. Something just to note about that. Um, I've seen it in a lot of groups lately, people talking about embossing. If you use regular embossing powder, it is going to be a little bit thicker and it's not going to be as detailed for a fine line image. If you use like a, a UT or something like that, which is like ultra thick, you're definitely not going to get any e detail in your stamp. So when you're shopping for embossing powder, if you like fine line images like these, you definitely want to be looking for something that specifies that it is for fine detail. Um, so I do like to stamp mine twice, uh, especially if it's the first time I'm stamping a stamp because I don't condition mine. Um, so I stamp it down twice and then uh, we'll go ahead and put on my embossing powder. The fine detail embossing powder I am using is from Hero Arts. Um, I like that one, as you can see from my jar. I've been using it for quite some time. And I do like to sprinkle on my embossing powder twice as well, just to make sure that everything is nice and covered. Uh, you do want to check to see if there's any like stray embossing powders, but because of the anti-static tool that I use, I almost never have them. And then from there, I while I've been doing all of the um the not the stamping but the like adding the embossing powder i've been preheating my heat gun so that way when i bring it to the paper it, it reduces the warping everything starts to melt almost immediately and then you just want to make sure that you melt it until it is smooth you can overheat it and then just kind of like melt it off um so you just want to pay attention that you're waiting until it is smooth for our watercolor medium today i'm just going to use distress things because i figure a lot of people have these um, um, you could use, you know, regular watercolors and you do the same technique. You could also use, um, like if you have a Zig Clean Color Marker or a Karen, you could scribble them down on a glass mat, but I just ink smush mine. You could also use any other ink that, you know, works with, uh, that's water reactive. And then from there, I'm just going to fill in my images with clean water, and then I will add my lightest color first, and then I will go back in and add my darkest color. Now, normally with watercolor, you cannot work next to two areas that are wet because they will bleed into each other, and it makes it very hard to get a crisp image. However, because we're using the little trick of the white heat embossing, um, they kind of create little walls for your water to sit in. So it has a little barrier between each of the images. So you don't have to worry so much about anything running together. And it's just a really easy way to just drop color in. So, you know, you put down your clean water, you drop your color in where you want it to go, and then just leave it and let the water do the work. Um, Cause it will, it will carry it uh, wherever you have put water down. So you'll notice when I'm doing the more open flowers um, that I'm not 
going in the center and that's so that I can do them a different color. But as long as you don't put water there, your pigment will not flow there. So it's just a really nice fast way to watercolor something and still end up with really pretty results with really honestly minimal effort on our part. There isn't any skill here required. Um, we will talk about how the ways that I like to add a little additional things um, to help make it more dimensional. But really, I mean, you can just do this basic technique and still end up with a really beautiful project that looks hand painted. Um, so you can see as I get more comfortable, I am working on uh, more than one flower at a time. You don't have to do that. Like if you're comfortable with one flower at a time because you're, you know, you're new and you're just learning, um, or maybe you're seasoned and that's your most comfortable technique. Like that's totally fine. Um, I just am comfortable doing a couple of them at a time. That does mean that I have to work pretty quickly though, because you want to get your pigment in there while your water is still wet. You don't want to wait until your paper is drying. So as these kind of dry back, you'll see I'm going to go back with the faded jeans, which is my darker color, and I'm just going to drop in that color where I want some more shading that will help the florals be a little bit more dimensional. Um, and these are still wet. It's not like bubbled up with water, but they are still damp so that it will blend in. Um, and really, I'm just looking for the same thing that I would be shading if I was coloring. So any points where, you know, two things meet or where one object lays on top of the other. So if I have a petal that's tucked back behind another petal, I would add shading to that back petal. Um, where they're kind of all meeting in the center, I would probably add a bit more shading. Where one flower is behind another, I would add more shading. Um, and watercolor is kind of one of those things that because you normally work in layers. Now with this technique, you don't have to, um, but you can kind of go back and as things are, you know, different levels of dry, you can add um, more pigment if you need it. Now, if it's completely dry, um, you know, your pigment isn't going to spread. Now that doesn't mean that you can't add shading. It just means that that shading isn't going to blend in quite as easily as it would if there was water down. Um, so anywho, this little set is totally adorable. It is so cute. Um, I'm so like happy to see Dawn's illustrations again. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, we've been friends for, oh my gosh, over a decade now. Uh, and we did meet due to crafting. Um, and then, uh, I ended up being on her design team, and so I got to work with her illustrations all the time, which made me super happy because she's so very talented. Um, but then for quite some time, like after COVID, she wasn't really putting anything out, um, you know, just because life happens. And then um, so now that she's solo, she's a solo artist, um, she's been working with Honeybee to put out some illustrations. Um, we saw one in the past um, release as well. Um, I think it's called Eternal Love, which were some beautiful florals. I love her florals. Uh, I love everything she does. Who are we kidding? Um, but anyway, this one is like I, I have said it before, like in past videos, but I will say it again. Nobody does animals like Dawn does animals. Um, quick side note, back to the card. So here I chose to do my greens as more of like a true spring green. Um, and these have very little real estate for some of them, especially the ones like um, closer at the top on the right hand side or the ones that are in like the little crown. Um, there's not a lot here. So you would be fine with one color. Um, but because that rustic wilderness does kind of knock back the brightness of the mowed lawn a little bit, I chose to put it in all of them. But really, you could put down the mowed lawn and then put a little bit darker mowed lawn at the base of the leaf and totally be fine. You don't necessarily need two colors for something this small. Um, and you'll see later on, like when I do the butterflies and the bees, I, I don't use two colors. I just use one because there isn't, they're, they're just tiny little areas. Um, but anyway, nobody does 
animals the way that she does animals. So you have a lot in the industry that are very um, cutesy or cartoony. Um, and though, like, don't get me wrong, those are cute, but that is exactly how I would describe them is they are very cute. Dawn does them, not that they're not cute because they are, but they're like, they're more sweet. They're more on the, I don't know. They're just like more refined. Not that to say that I don't like the other animals are on the market. I, I That's not what I'm saying. Because I do think a lot of them are super cute and I'm happy to, to put them on my cards. Um, but her style is just, it's, I don't know. It's like her, her animals are like a bit more elegant. Like she's the fanciest animals. <laughs> so anyway, I was super excited to see this little bunny come to fruition because I think that this little bunny is totally adorable. Um, and so like your girl still got it. She's, she's still, um, super talented and fantastic. And I think that these will make, um, great. Now I chose to make mine an Easter card because we have Easter, you know, coming up tomorrow. Um, but there's lots of just regular spring sentiments in there and lots of really great florals. And, um, you know, Dawn's probably much, well, much better versed to show you all the different ways that you could, you know, use those together since it's her set. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, possibilities here where you don't even necessarily have to use the bunny. You could, you could just use the florals. Um, but I could not resist using that little bunny because, He's just so, so sweet. He's just the sweetest little bunny. Um, but anywho, so for the like color palette, I knew that I was doing all my flowers the same. Again, you know, that's a creative choice. You certainly could mix up the colors and do them, you know, the flowers, uh, a couple of different colors, and that would be great. Um, but since I knew I was, blue is my boyfriend, you guys know this. I love the blue. Um, and because I knew I wanted my bunny to be brown, I love blues and browns together. They're just such a nice combination. Um, so that is how I, even though I do love blue and blue is my boyfriend, like I'm not going to fight that. No joke. But I do love blues and browns together. So that made sense. And then um, for the centers of the flowers and the bees and the butterflies, I chose fossilized amber because it is a warmer color. So I'm going to have a warm colored bunny with my browns. And then I chose a warmer center for the flowers because I've got a lot of cool tones going on here. Um, so I chose to to just add in like those little pops of warmth um just to kind of you know even out the the color palette a bit and then for the butterflies here um and the little bee bodies I actually only ended up using one bee even though I painted two um but I'm not going to use any other colors I'm just going to put in my clean water I'm going to drop in my pigment and then um I will go back and add additional pigment to shade of those um, but I'm not going to use another color. And you could do all of the things that way. I just find it easier. I mean, quite honestly, I find it easier to use a lighter color and a darker color for just dropping in the pigment. Um, for the bunny, I'm also going to use one color for his base. And then when I paint in his ears, I'm not going to paint in his whole ear. I'm just going to do the outline of his ear so that I can have brown on the outside edges and I can put in a little bit of pink and white in the inside of his ears. So again, just remember, you know, that pigment's going to flow wherever you put down water. So if you want to block off areas like how I'm doing with his ears, just don't put any water there. And I promise you, your pigment will stay where you put it. It's only going to flow where the water is. So it does give you a little bit of control that way, even within the confines of the embossing. So for um, his little bunny body, I um, did add a little pink nose and then a little pink on his cheeks with some saltwater taffy. And then I'm going to use that saltwater taffy at the base of his ears. I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to go back in with clean water and I'm going to start on the opposite end. 
So when you're watercoloring, if you start on the same end as your pigment, you're going to drag it out and you're going to have one tone. If you start on the opposite side, um, you will have clean water for the pigment to flow into and you will get a much more like color variation. So it really depends on the look that you're going for. But just know that there's two different techniques kind of even with among the easy watercolor techniques for moving those. So I added a little bit of um, more shading around his face and underneath his neck. And here is my one, um, that's where I'm going back and adding the, the little bit of extra shading to the butterflies and the bees. Um, here's my one regret of doing this with the white heat embossing. Um, also dropping in some of this brushed corduroy into the center of my flowers, just again for a little bit of shading. And while I had my blue out, I forgot to get my little bee wings. So I'm going back and getting that stormy sky and just very diluted amount of color to just get his wings a little blue. Um, my one regret is I don't like his eyes embossed in white. Um, I don't think that makes him look cute. So I do have a little fix for that. I don't know if it's a great fix or not. Like, I'll just be real with you guys. You you know, I like to be transparent. Um, but it did work. I just think it made him a little less sweet. Like, I, that's what I think. Um, so in addition to die cutting those out with their coordinating dies, I'm also going to be using the spring vines layering frames. Um, this was last year, year before, I can't remember. I use them all the time. These layering frames and Honeybee has a bunch of them are so excellent because um, they're just like foundational things that you can go back to time and time again. So I am cutting this out of, this is Partly Cloudy from Spellbinders, which is a really nice kind of muted blue that matches the colors that we have going on um, in our watercolor. And then the next layer of that I am going to cut out in white. If you guys watch my channel, you know I don't love a white outline, and the only way that I can fix the white outline without coloring it in is to, in fact, mount it on white. So that is what I chose to do. I'm going to use that piece to stamp my sentiment as well. Some regrets over this. I kind of wished I would have went maybe a brown or maybe a more spot-on blue, but I chose to do it in navy. It looks okay. Um... I don't love it. It didn't bother me at the time, but when I came back in today uh, to take my photos and stuff, I was like, mm, girl, I don't love that, but it's okay. It's, it, it is, it's all right. It's a learning thing. Um, so here I am going to adhere my layers down flat. So this layer here, um, and then the white layer, um, the kind of more elegant, uh, like, detailed cutout. Um, that one will go down flat as well. I did cut an additional leaf, leaf, wreath, an additional wreath out of um, some leftover watercolor cardstock that I had, honestly, from a card that didn't work out for a completely different thing. Um, but rather than throw that away, I always save those because they're nice, because they're thicker. Um, they're nice if you want just a little bit of lift from your cardstock. So I am going to layer that. Um, they, those, they just get glued together. And then I'll have the thickness of two pieces of watercolor paper, which honestly is a fairly good thickness. Um, that way it's a little bit lifted up and my bunny will be uh, then tucked behind. Um, I chose to do mine with the vines kind of pointing up. You certainly could turn it around and have your bunny at the bottom have more of a, like an arch uh, at the top. But I'm just going to hold this little wreath in place and then um, tuck my little bunny behind it. Uh, and he will be glued flat as well. Now his little flower crown or her little flower crown, however you want to put it, um, is going to be popped up. Honeybee has really great foam dots, but there's two different um, heights. One of them is smaller and thicker, and one of them is larger and thinner. I should have grabbed the larger, thinner ones, because I'm going to be honest with you, this crown has got some oomph. Like, it's got some height on it, y'all. <laughs> and it probably didn't need to be that tall. Um, but again, that's like a personal preference thing. It doesn't it doesn't really affect, you know, the card um, 
you know, look in its entirety. I just feel like it's super tall comparative to everything else. Um, so now I can go ahead and adhere my wreath and then add my little, um, my little flyers, my little butterflies and my little bee. Um, those are super, super cute. And like I said, I chose to heat emboss this, which makes it a little bit harder to see the detail of the full set. Um, but if you just stamped it in black or if you no line colored it, uh, which I would love to see uh, Dawn do, we'll, we'll see. We'll, she, we'll see if she pulls that out or not. Um, but you would be able to see all of the like the really, really great detail of the um, like the stems and the vines. I can see it in real life. I realize it's probably very challenging to see on the screen. I adhered my little guys um, so that they kind of created a little bit of a visual triangle. Uh, the little butterflies did go on top of the wreath, and then I put the bee um, kind of on the background. Originally, I had the butterfly down at the bottom, but I didn't love that. I did end up moving him up a little bit because I did have more area to fill in there. The Easter blessings, I kind of put off to the left-hand side, and then because, um, you know, I have those two layers of the, the wreath, I do have to put foam tape on just a portion of it. So what you see me doing here is putting foam tape all over it. Don't make the mistake that I did. Um, I very quickly realized that that was not going to work, and then so I just put foam tape at the bottom and then glue on the top. Uh, here, one of the little corners just was just a hair too high. So sometimes it just be like that. You just got to mess around with it until it, you know, goes down and it works. Um, for the eyes, I actually went back to, I didn't want black. So I was looking for brown and I found them in the autumn pearl stickers. And I just used the smallest ones to give my bunny some little brown eyes. And then in the vintage love set, um, the gemstones there have these really nice um, kind of warm gold colors. And so I chose those rhinestones uh, to accent my sentiment and then to kind of fill in those. Um, gaps. The last thing that I did was add a little bit of um, shimmer. Now, this can reactivate your distress inks. So before you switch colors, like from the flowers to the butterflies, um, you need to make sure that you do scribble it off on a scrap piece of paper. Otherwise, you could be putting blue in your yellow. Um, but otherwise, that is it. That's the entire card. So I hope that you will check this out. Dawn has another uh, a die also in this release, which is fantastic. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you learned a little something and we'll give this technique a try. Uh, thank you again. I always appreciate you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.